Hi, this is Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you what to do when your hope is deferred. Chrissy Miles and we're here at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel and Resort here in Nashville, Tennessee at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. I'm so excited to bring the Chrissy Miles show from the Opryland Hotel to you today. And I can't wait to talk to you today about what to do when your hope is deferred. But before we do that, click the bell, subscribe to this channel and get notified of more of my proven tips to get more out of life. Let's get started. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is the tree of life. And you know, there are so many heart sick people in the world. Maybe you've experienced this yourself. I know for me, there was a time in my life where everything seemed to be going wrong. I had no friends, I had no community. I was estranged from my family, no romantic relationships, no money, and everything around me was a deferment of all the things that I had hoped for. You know, when you grow up, you have so many dreams, you have so many hopes, so many desires, and occasionally you get into frustrating sticking points where you're thinking, I thought my life would be going better by now. Well, the Bible teaches us what to do to keep our hope alive, and I'm gonna share with you today what you can do when your hopes are deferred. Here's step number one, stay in faith. The Bible teaches in Mark 11:24 that whatever you pray for, if you believe that you already have received it, it will be yours. Now, this is counterintuitive to the way that most of us operate because we think that if we see it, then it's an indication that everything is going well or that I have received my prayer. But in fact, the Bible teaches just the opposite. It says that you have to believe that you already have it before you actually see it. That's what staying in faith is all about. Now, the only way that you can tap into faith in this regard is to see things in an unseen realm. And what that means is to look at things from the deepest parts of your heart, the imagination of your heart. In your imagination, in your mind's eye, can you see yourself walking through to the job interview that you want to get? Can you see yourself having the child that you want to hold in your arms? Can you see yourself marrying your Prince Charming or your Princess Belle? You see, in Mark 11, 24, if you receive it, it's an indication that you have believed it. Now, the contrary is also true, that if you're not receiving the things that you are praying for, means that you don't really believe it. Now, it's not an opportunity to get condemned over these things, and that's where a lot of people go to, is they start feeling bad about themselves, that maybe they're not believing correctly. But, you know, it's not as much about believing for things as it is believing that Jesus has already purchased for you every promise that God lays out for us in the Bible. You can believe for things, but that's not really the purpose of our faith. The purpose of our faith is to believe that Jesus has accomplished all things for us. And because I'm in him, I am now the recipient of everything that belongs to him. When you stay in faith, it helps you in those moments when your hope is deferred and you're waiting for your promises to come true in your life. Here's step number two, stay single minded. The Bible teaches us in James that a double-minded man is unstable in everything he does. And what he's talking about is also praying and believing for things and not being swayed back and forth between doubt and unbelief. So when we sway back and forth between doubt and unbelief, what that does is it actually delays the promises of God from happening in our lives. Why? Because we have to stay focused on all of the things that God has promised us. We have to stay focused on the things that we're hoping for because every time we dip into doubt and unbelief, it's simply another minute, another hour, another day, another week, another month, another year that your hopes are delayed. So here's some steps on staying focused. 
focus your attention on the right things. Whenever doubt and discouragement come your way, start telling yourself about the promises of God, reminding yourself that the promises are true because of what Jesus has accomplished. And if you can remind yourself that Jesus has finished everything, he's accomplished all of God's promises, that all of God's promises are yes, and we speak the amen under the glory of God, as scripture says, you can actually have a confidence and you can stay focused even while your hope is temporarily deferred. Here's step number three. Put your hope in the right place. The Bible teaches us in Psalms that our soul or our mind, our will, our emotions can be downcast at times. And in those times, we are to put our hope in God. You see, it's a little bit of a false misnomer or a misnomer rather to put your hope in things. And here's why. God promised us that he would take care of all of our needs. He gives us that promise first and foremost so that we can trust that when all of our needs are met, we can now develop a relationship with him. You see, if God waited to give us the things that we needed and then tried to establish a relationship with us in the midst of all that, we would have a really hard time trusting him. And one of the ways that we know that this is true is when you look at the Garden of Eden, you see that before God made mankind, he actually preemptively provided everything that man would need before he was ever even created. That's an indication of how much God loves us. So he wanted all of our needs to be taken care of. He wanted all of our needs to be met and fulfilled in this garden-like atmosphere. And then his desire was to place man in it. Well, you see, we have even better promises today under the new covenant. In the new covenant, God takes care of all of our needs. Now he does this in a spiritual way through showing us the promises of the kingdom. He deposits the kingdom of God on the inside of us where all of our needs are met spiritually. Then it's up to us to release the kingdom promises into this world by the things we say, staying in faith, keeping our hopes up so that we can see the things that we're believing for manifest. But again, when we put our focus on the things of this world, we're actually misguided. And what we should really be doing is putting our hope in God. Why? Because God is stable. He's everlasting. He doesn't change. He's immovable. And when our hope is in him, it gives us a sure foundation from which to believe all of the promises. So don't put your hope in things. Put your hope in God and see how your emotions can be lifted and excited about when the desire will be fulfilled in your life. I want to encourage you to go to my store at chrissymiles.com and get your copy of my 30-day journal called The Courage to Believe. I'm featuring this journal this year at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, and it is going to get you started on an awesome path of rekeying your belief system, rekeying the thoughts of your heart to begin establishing a better foundation for receiving and walking in the blessing of God. We all want to receive and we all want to walk in the promises of God. We want to see things work in our lives that's part of the mission that i have to share with you is how to get the word of god to actually work and produce something positive in your life and if that appeals to you you've got to get your copy of this journal the 30-day journal the courage to believe it's going to reset your entire thought process on how to focus your attention on the right things how to challenge the beliefs of your heart to actually dig in there and see what are some of the thought processes that are preventing me from actually having the life that I want? I always say, I want you to get more out of life. And this is a huge part of getting more out of life. It's challenging what you believe and rekeying your belief system on the truth of God's word through a relationship with Jesus. So go to the store today, chrissymiles.com and pick up your copy of my 30 day journal, The Courage to Believe. Here's step number four, find joy in the journey, not in the destination. So many times when we're hoping for things, again, we put our hope in the wrong things. We should be putting our hope in God first and foremost. But when we're hoping for things, we feel that as long as we can accomplish this thing, then we'll feel satisfied. Then we'll feel like we've really done something special. But you see, if we don't find joy in the journey, we will start getting very disappointed because the minute you accomplish one thing, I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, but the next thing sort of sneaks up on us and we're already anxious about accomplishing the next goal. And before you know it, every goal that you meet actually produces anxiety because it's an open door to the next thing that you want to accomplish. 
So if you accomplish your goal, that's great. But if you're putting all of your hope in the accomplishment of your goals, you're really going to be disappointed because God wants to expand and enlarge everything that you're about, everything that you're putting your hand to. So what that means is for every great goal that you accomplish, of course, God is going to open a door for you to do the next thing. So if you put your joy in the destination, in getting there and finishing it all and doing everything perfectly and having every list checked off to completion, you're going to be extremely disappointed and dissatisfied with your life. And it's going to create an emotion in you of heart sickness because you'll feel like you can never measure up. You will feel like you can never actually reach your destination for everything that you check off the list. There's 10 more items that come behind that and you see that's just the reality of life and if you don't master the art of finding joy in the journey you're going to be extremely anxiety ridden you're going to be heart sick most of the time you'll probably end up in depression because it is a stress to wake up every day and feel like you can never really get to where you're going so the destination is it really should be about the relationship that you have with Jesus. So if you wake up every day and you say, my destination today is to stay tight with Jesus, you're gonna be putting yourself in a great position to see all of your hopes fulfilled and all of your desires manifested because you're putting your hope in the right thing and you're finding joy in just the daily living, the daily abiding in your relationship with God. And it's gonna be so important, so fruitful. You're gonna find yourself being at such peace in approaching God from this direction and this vantage point that you'll wake up every day excited and full of joy, knowing that no matter what the day brings, no matter what the day holds, whether you check everything off your list or whether you go to bed at night and you still have piles and piles of things to do, it doesn't really matter because each day is about fellowshipping with God, relating to him in your heart, and you find joy in that, that's gonna give you an excitement for life that you've never experienced before. So put your hope in the right thing and find joy in the daily living because of your relationship with God. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed these tips on what to do when your hope is deferred. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you know someone who's really struggling with hopelessness right now, share this video with them. It might be exactly what they need to start re-engaging in life. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel for new episodes each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life. Thanks for watching.